our citizens. Good evening Zimbabwe, welcome to HSTV News in Brief, I'm Chingeti Chidi, these are the headlines. Job seeker denied bail again. Police worry over spike in armed robberies. Teachers dump teaching posts for meeting with ED. Zimbabwe celebrates hosting ICASA 2023. Now for the news in detail. Embedded legislator Job Sikala had his bail application turned down for the up -tenth time by Magistrate Aurai Manuere. The legislator had made a fresh bail application citing changed circumstances. The Triple C vice chairman was sent back to Chikurubi. Lady Gomera gives us a court roundup from Rotten Row. Embattled opposition legislator Job Sikala had his bail application turned down for the upteenth time, sending him back to remand prison where he has been housed since his arrest in June. In what has become routine and predictable, Taurai Manwere denied Sikala bail, saying there were no changed circumstances warranting his bail applications to be considered. Manwere in his ruling said, circumstances cited by the defense lawyers of Jeremiah Bamu that the continued incarceration of Sikala was diminishing the trust of the general public in the judiciary was not sufficient. Manwere said he would not be moved by public opinion and perception, but rather would remain loyal to the constitution. Sikala faces two separate charges, one of obstructing the course of justice and another of inciting public violence in Yatsimi, which he is jointly charged with legislator Godfrey Sitole. The legislator is expected back in court on November 2. Sikala facing multiple cases also appeared before Magistrate Vongai Muchuchuti Guriro for continuation of trial, where he is accused of inciting public violence in a July 31 demonstration quashed by the police in 2020. Muchuchuti postponed the matter to November 1 after the state failed to serve defense lawyers with their written submissions on why court should receive a flash which contains alleged evidence of the commission of the crime. The, the court um, dismissed our application for bail on changed circumstances. Uh, we anticipated this, uh, you know, considering what has been happening, considering the decisions that uh, the similar courts have been handling over uh, this case. So we anticipated that, um, shockingly, uh, the grounds that were uh, given as uh, the basis for dismissing the application. Uh, what, what shocked me the most is that um, we know, it's, it's common cause, it's, it's, it's general knowledge that uh, the courts are for the people. Uh, not the, the other way around and uh, for a court to give a suggestion uh, that uh, the public perception uh, over what is happening uh, uh, in, in, in judicial proceedings does not matter or is irrelevant is shocking because as a basis for denying bail the criminal president evidence act is actually very clear a court has to also consider the public perception to say what does the public think if we release someone on bail. The same ground must also apply to say what does the public think in the event that we do not release uh, someone on bail. We've got a petition that has been signed by over 50,000 people. That fact has been admitted, it has not been denied. The court is effectively accepting that there is that petition, but is saying we don't care. We are not bound by that. We don't care what the public think. So clearly the courts have, to me, ceased to be the courts of the people and for the people several times i think i've lost count it's now almost seven times appearing to court with a similar application and uh, with similar grounds strong grounds that have been uh, uh, given by the defense team and the courts have consistently and maintained that they are not releasing jobs on bail the legal team will have to sit down and uh, you know go through the judgment itself the ruling itself and see the possible options that are available
Uh, as soon as they are available, they will be communicated. The day was short of a family reunion at the Harare Magistrates Court as Sikala's wife also appeared in court before Magistrate Evelyn Masharakwe facing charges of reckless driving. Ellen Sikala is expected to appear in court on 27 October for continuation of trial after her case was postponed because one witness came to court late. Uh, the first witness was led today. Uh, we will have the um, second witness led on the, on the 28th of uh, October and that will be the close of the state's case. Then we will take it from there. Another legislator, Joanna Mamumbe and Triple C youth leader Cecilia Chimbiri were also back in court and the Nelson Chamisa led party members literally dominated the court rule as accused persons. The state made an application for separation of trial before Manwere seeking to have the case continue without activist Makombore Roharu Sirishe who has an outstanding warrant of arrest after allegedly skipping the country. The application was granted. Haru Zirishe, Mamombe, Chimbiri, Stanley Manyenga, and Lovejoy Chitengu face charges of violating COVID-19 regulations after allegedly demonstrating in Warren Park during COVID-19-induced lockdowns. The matter was remanded to 11 November 2022 for trial. So the state made an application for separation of trials on the basis that uh, the fifth accused person Makomborero is on an outstanding warrant of arrest, which means the trial must proceed minus him. So for that to happen, the magistrate must grant an order separating the trials. So the prosecutor applied for that separation. We did not oppose the application. So the application for separation was then granted. Then uh, after it was granted, the matter was then remanded to 11 November 2022 for the trial for those four that are remaining. While it's, the state will still pursue uh, Mr. Aruzivishi separately. Human rights activists and the opposition has accused Juling Sanu PF of using state apparatus to stifle democratic space and cow opposition members and dissenting voices into silence. They have said Sikala, Sitole, and the Nyatsime 16, including Mamombe and Chimbiri, are political prisoners. Reporting for HSTV News, Lady Gomera, Harare Magistrates Court, Rotten Row. The sharp increase in armed robbery, some official masterminded by members of the police and the army, has got the nation worried and running scared. However, the Zimbabwe Republic Police have said they are up for the task and will be looking to deal with the scourge and bring culprits to book. Atricia Gondo gives us the story in detail. The sharp increase in cases of armed robbery over the past months has shocked police into action. With the Zimbabwe Republic Police Deputy Commissioner General Lung Mube saying they were working tirelessly to ensure perpetrators are brought to book and that trend thwarted. Armed robberies have spiked, with major highs having been reported at banks and top companies such as ABC Auctions, who recently lost 1.5 million United States dollars. Police have acted swiftly to round up suspects. Take note that the country is currently experiencing a spate of armed robbery cases. This has become a worrisome trend, which we as the police feel is being exacerbated by in inappropriate behavior by individuals and organizations alike, who against the wisdom of banking their cash are choosing to keep in their homes and offices. Let me take this opportunity to implore our people to desist from such behavior as it invites criminals to their doorsteps. This is not to say that our citizens should live in fear of crime, but should also take the necessary steps to complement our efforts to rid society of the malad of crime. In that regard, I wish to reassure all Zimbabweans that the Zimbabwe Republic Police is working flat out to arrest perpetrators of these armed robberies whilst encouraging 
everyone to play their part in preventing them from occurring. It is worth noting that a number of successes are being scored in this regard and some of the armed robbers continue to be accounted for. I therefore wish to reiterate that the perpetrators of the heinous crime must be sniffed out from whenever, wherever they may opt to hide. We must never give them any breathing space. The more they feel the heat, the better for the citizens. Lube was speaking at the police general headquarters where he was sending away a contingent of police officers who will be leaving for South Sudan Abbey on a peacekeeping mission whilst also welcoming home another contingent which had just returned from South Sudan. Team leader Superintendent Sheila Tungaza in reporting back said South Sudan's conflict was being fueled by political and ethnic tensions. Zimbabwean opposition has said conflict could arise if the 2023 general election is not run in a free and fair environment. As South Sudan, the world's youngest country, has been going through a lot of instability due to ethnic and political conflict. The country won its independence from Sudan in 2011 after many years of conflict. Due to the conflict in the country, many people were displaced and they moved to POC sites. However, in 2021, the mission mandate changed and the POC sites were handed over to the government as internally displaced persons camps. The role of ARP was shifted to capacity building through technical assistance and advice and, the, uh, sorry, sorry, and advice to the law enforcement agencies, human rights monitoring, confidence and trust building, and supervision of SGBV cases within and outside IDP camps. Despite all the instabilities in the country, Working in South Sudan for the UNIS staff in general is very safe. No major incidents of attacks on UNCO staff were recorded during the tour of duty. The many years of political conflict have resulted in non performance of the country's economy. Millions of people rely on food handouts from humanitarian actors. However, our cases of ambushes of trucks carrying food aid are rampant, therefore, the need for high level exports. The economy of South Sudan is highly dependent on oil. However, political instability, poor governance, and corruption continue to hinder the development in the world's youngest country. Despite having vast natural resources and a huge number of domesticated animals, the country is yet to realize its full potential. Nube called on those leaving to obey to perform their duties in a manner beyond reproach. Ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to turn my attention to those who are steady to leave the country for a mission in RBA. The organization takes pride in the affirmation of our performance by the United Nations through secondment of more police officers for peacekeeping duties. It is in this context that today we are sending off contingent number six, made up of three members comprising one male, and two female police officers to RBA. To the outgoing contingent, I wish to challenge you to take after your peers who have been to these missions before you. The standard of performance they have set is beyond reproach, and the organization has reposed the trust in you that you will be equally good ambassadors for the country. I also wish to remind you that your families look up to you and you must not forget them as you go on this foreign mission. You must also remember that such a call for duty is not just a national responsibility but a global task that is premised on ensuring peace in Abe. The people of that nation yearn for peace and they have put their faith in you to help them rebuild their lives and they have a peaceful core existence. Your duty, therefore, is to ensure that such a responsibility does not lead to disappointment on the part of the people of RBA and the United Nations.
Zimbabwean police are always commended when they work outside Zimbabwe, but back home they stand accused of corruption, human rights abuse, among other vices. Reporting for HSTV News, Atricia Gondo at Police General Headquarters, Harare. Hundreds of teachers dumped their workstations and left pupils unattended as they thronged to Harare to attend a meeting with President Emerson Munangagwa. The teachers slept in classrooms in Harare after traveling from across the country. Among the poorly paid civil servants, the teachers formed a Teachers for AD grouping which met with the president in the capital today. Marceline Mazura filed this report. President Emerson Munangagwa has called on teachers to guard their profession against detractors and divisive elements. Speaking at the launch of Teachers for Economic Development in the capital under the theme Integrating Zimbabwe Teachers into the Mainstream Economy Through Ideological Orientation, Munangagwa said he was happy teachers had come to him. One of the most pleasing surprises I have in my career. Teachers smarting from poor salaries have been confronting government through job action and lately sit-ins as they press for better salaries and wages. The government has often accused teachers who join job actions of being agents of the West. <laughs> Representative for Teachers for ED, Emon Chiwocha, said the organization will play a big role in making teachers a cornerstone of the economy and facilitate for them to build their own schools as doctors build surgeries. Teachers for Economic Development is a homegrown initiative targeting those teachers who believe in embracing the national vision expelled by the government of the day without fear or favor. Our objectives are, as teachers for ED, to impart with knowledge and skills to teachers so that they make money for themselves, schools, and the community. To give the alternative and consciety on the need to teach regardless of circumstances, but also to use the environment that we live in to make money. To contribute towards the economic development of Zimbabwe, including social policy issues and synchronize with the present vision in the education sector and support efforts to empower our fellow Zimbabweans. To conduct teacher orientation for all willing teachers. To build a patriotic and conscious teacher who will be positive to national programs in line with the vision 2030. To embark on economic projects and activities in schools household level and self-sustenance. In as much as it's not all of us in here who will make it, our competent-based curriculum is our basis and we are taking advantage of it. We are also taking advantage of our members who see potential amongst us to build our nation. Your Excellency, sir, we are also taking advantage of production units, policy in schools and commercialization trust. We can help production that will help close the gap of delayed payments of BIM. The engine behind the curriculum is the teacher. We cannot have a teacher who teaches metal work but cannot build a window. Yeah. We should benefit from our competence-based curriculum since everyone depends on them. We are a sector which was sitting on its competencies. Doctors and nurses have surgeries. And we are saying as teachers, we should also have our own schools. <laughs> teachers during elections work with the Zimbabwe Elections Commission to manage polling stations, joined the political fray endorsing Munangagwa as the perfect candidate for 2023. On the same note as Chair for Economic Development, we declare today, on the 19th of um, October, 
that you are our sole candidates and we are going to stand behind you. Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, widely seen as leading a camp within ZANU PF to upstage President Munangagwa, took to the podium to declare his boss the sole candidate for the ruling party ahead of the 2023 general elections. This gathering is meant to cement the commitment by the teaching profession to support the leadership and vision of our guest of honor today. Indeed, it is an endorsement by teachers that our guest of honor should continue with his astute leadership of this country through progressive and empowering policies, initiatives that promote inclusivity without leaving no one and no place behind. This is why we have said he is our sole candidate for 2023. Teachers left their students unattended in the various provinces to drive aboard school buses to attend the Teachers for ED in Daba. They joined the long list of what ZANU PF insiders have called parallel structures, which include women for ED, MPs for ED, men believed churches for ED as ZANU PF goes for broke ahead of the 2023 general elections. Munangagwa, looking for his second and final term, faces his possible strong challenge from Triple C leader Nelson Chamisa. Reporting for HSTV News, Gaddafi Wells, Harare. Stakeholders in Zimbabwe's response to HIV and AIDS together with the hospitality industry met with Society for AIDS in Africa, SAR officials, where they received news that Zimbabwe had won the right towards the International Conference on AIDS and STIs in Africa, ICASA 2023. The Indaba, which will be held in the resort city of Victoria Falls, is likely to bring huge financial spin-offs for Zimbabwe, especially in the hospitality and tourism industry. Joyce Digiti filed this report. Zimbabwe will next year host the International Conference on AIDS and STIs in Africa, ICASA, and the city of Victoria Falls after beating Kenya for the rights. The conference is expected to bring back HIV and AIDS responses back on the spotlight after years of neglect owing to the COVID-19 pandemic which hit the world in 2019. Speaking at a stakeholders meeting, SAR President and former Health Minister Dr. David P. Parrenyatwa said the conference will bring back the resources and attention to HIV and AIDS. He also said this time around, ICASA will have a multi-pronged approach. This ICASA is not just HIV and AIDS. It encompasses TB, it encompasses malaria, it encompasses other emerging pandemics, including COVID-19. But we know that cancer can also result as, as, as a consequence of some of these diseases. So cancer is now very much included as we fight uh, uh, HIV. We must include cancer, all forms of cancer, cancer of the cervix, cancer of the breast, cancer of the prostate in men. And I think that we should take on board Please just not focus on HIV. I want to emphasize that. Let us broaden and be able to be inclusive in those areas are very, very important for us. You are aware that COVID-19 had taken away a lot of resources and focus from HIV. We want to refocus back to HIV so that you can achieve 2030 as your goal that we have set. But to do that, we need to completely refocus, not just in terms of prevention, and prevention, but also who is going to finance this? How are we going to domestically finance ourselves? And that's why the National AIDS Trust Fund of Zimbabwe still remains a beacon of hope in terms of domestic financing. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to urge our key and vulnerable populations to continue to stand out. Don't be represented, uh, represent yourselves. And I'm glad that you're very, coming out very, very strongly. And that, I think, to us is very important. ICASA is based on three, three areas. One, science, 
how does science in HIV, TB, and malaria assist us? So that conference, you'll find there will be a lot of scientific papers, real research papers, real abstracts. And we hope that some of you will be able to offer those. So that's one area. The next area is leadership. How do you promote leadership in the fight against HIV, against malaria, against TB? And that leadership is not just the leadership of government. It's you. Leadership is yourselves. So that leadership is also going to be discussed at ICASA in a very strong way. And finally, ICASA is based on the communities. We want to have at least 12,000 people attending. And that's communities. At least, at least. And I think my director here will tell you he wants 15. But I'm saying as a Zimbabwean, we want at least 12,000 attending. And if those 12,000 attend, that's community. The word will go around. The teaching will go around. The awareness will go around. And that is exactly what we want. 2015, we launched self-testing at that event. Self-testing has become very popular. People can test themselves quietly and get their results. So self-testing is still on board. And we also are saying the same thing about self-testing for COVID, self-testing for other areas. 1985, that's when he found the first case of HIV in Zimbabwe. Up to now, we're still fighting HIV, and successfully so. That is why, part of the reason why you've been selected, and part of the reason why you're selected also, is to continue this fight against HIV. UN AIDS Country Director Sophia Mukasa Moniko gave Zimbabwe a boost, pledging to support ICASA 2023 and press the country's response on HIV and AIDS. On behalf of the United Nations system at large in Zimbabwe, we are pledging our support to the ICASA 2023 as we usually do in all ICASAs. If you look at the history of the ICASA from inception, the United Nations was there and we shall still be there. Among so many things that we do, we pledge technical assistance right from today up to the end of the ICASA. We also pledge mobilizing the communities, not only to be involved, but to be engaged in the ICASA. Going forward again through you, ICASA delegation, when we are in Zimbabwe, one of our focus is to fight the inequalities that are hindering us to meet the end of AIDS by 2030. ICASA director Luke Amand Budia, who was in the country for the MOU signing ceremony, also spoke to the media. The community is the key of the conference and the key of any resolution when it comes to ICASA. My president said that uh, ICASA has three programs. True, we have the leadership program, the scientific program, and the community program. But from my point of view, without the community, there is no leadership, there is no scientific. Because the science work will be applied for to who? You know, this is why community are capital for us. And I'm happy that I can see my people here. The National AIDS Council of Zimbabwe has been fronting the bid for Zimbabwe to host ICASA, which has the ability to benefit the nation economically, especially in the tourism sector. In 2015, Zimbabwe played host to ICASA and made profits of around one million United States dollars. The conference was out in Harare, Joyce Digiti, HSTV News. Thank you for joining us for this news brief. Good night and remember to watch HSTV for more. I'm Chengetu Chidi. This is HSTV News.